Well, Bishop Magaya is uh, a bona fide Zimbabwean, a born again Christian, an ordained uh, bishop with Grace Ablaze Ministries International. I'm also the founder and executive di director of uh, Zimbabwe Divine Destiny. This is a church based organization that agitates for justice and peace. The relationship between church and, and politics is that the church defines how politics should play, you know, how politics should be conducted, how politics should be done, because uh, uh, the church derives her authority and mandate from the word of God. And when you look into the scriptures, you will see that the prophets were always speaking to issues of national governance and national politics. So there's no way that you can actually separate the church from politics. It's just that the difference is that uh, we don't play, uh, we don't do politicking, we don't play politics in the way that uh, politicians do it. The church has to always be vocal but at times it is how they are vocal and why they are vocal. So the way I look at it is that uh, Mugabe's era and Mnangagwa's era are the same. Uh, there has been perpetuation of violation of people's God-given rights. During Mugabe's era, you would hear, you would see people being arrested for demonstrating. Uh, you would see people uh, witnessing people being abducted and killed, you know, Itai Zamara, was abducted and possibly killed during Mugabe's era. And in this era, we have continued to see the same abductions happening. Uh, you, you remember Dr. Peter Magombe, who was abducted and only released uh, after a number of days and came back traumatized. And, uh, you know, the, the trio, the, the Triple C trio, Cecilia, Netsai, and Joanna were abducted, quite traumatized. And uh, more blessing uh, was abducted and killed. And these things are still happening within the so-called Second Republic. And uh, we do not see any differences uh, between the two dispensations. And that is the reason why the church still speaks with clarity regarding these uh, uh, injustices. You're talking about the differences within the church and what seems to be division in terms of how the church uh, sees um, government. Now, the, the first thing that I just want to, to, to say uh, is that um, right from the times of the Bible, there, there was never um, unanimity, there was never agreement in terms of how uh, the prophets uh, responded uh, to the abuses that were actually taking place. You know, there were those prophets that were actually singing the song of a parody, singing the song of uh, dictators, singing the song of those that were repressive. So this is not uh, the first thing that we are seeing that. And you also remember, you know, when you look into the word of God, there are people like uh, yeah, your Amoses, there are people like Amazias. You know, you know, Amos was a true prophet of God who spoke the oracles of God, you know, against any uh, repressions that were actually happening in, uh, in, uh, in, uh, in, in Jerusalem. So those divisions will always be there as long as you find people that uh, benefit from uh, the wicked system, as long as there are people that are morally, um, uh, uh, that, that are moral failures. In other words, one of the reasons why, one of the reasons why people don't speak truth to authority is uh, of mer moral failure. If you don't walk right, and these leaders, they know that you don't walk right, and they know that you've got a small house, they know that you're a divorcee, you know, they, they know that there is a weak spot in your life, and you cannot speak with authority because you have a moral failure. But there are those also that have benefited from the system. They have received farms, they have received laptops and uh, vehicles, and there's no way that they could actually uh, bite the finger, you know, or, uh, that fits them. So, yeah, yeah, I mean, I have nothing to hide. Some of us have nothing to benefit. In fact, we reject totally out of hand to benefit from the system on condition that we support them. Well, I don't know about others, but not myself, not the church, as far as I'm concerned. Uh, all I know is that uh, 
we have had people that perpetrated violence and that have not been prosecuted. We have people that have killed Boneni Ngwe in, in Kwekwe that were initially arrested and uh, we commended the police for having arrested these people, but we understand that these people have been released. So that has nothing to do with uh, you know, the, 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 our, our coming closer uh, to national plebiscite in order to draw the, in, uh, the, international, uh, uh, the, 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 the international world attention. You see, we, we are raising issues that are pertinent here. Uh, President Munangagwa set up a, 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 a Motlande-led commission and they uh, uh, produced a report, which report he, he actually uh, uh, launched. But as of now, he has not uh, adhered to that uh, report. And we are raising these things. It has nothing to do with 2023 elections. More blessing has been abducted and she has been killed. And, you know, if anything, it is them that, whether fortuitously, blindly, or deliberately, do things so recklessly as we come closer uh, to these national events. And uh, the reason for which they, don't, they do that, one really wonders. But what I'm saying is that uh, what they claim, as far as I'm concerned, is not the truth. Right, church leaders, yes, were arrested for praying for their country, the problem that we have is that we have a state that is actually paranoid, afraid of, 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 of their own people, uh, afraid of the terms, of the concepts of justice, afraid of uh, constitutionalism as a concept, afraid of uh, adherence to the constitution. So each time that people gather to talk about issues pertaining to justice, they think that uh, we, are, we are advancing uh, Western agenda. No. So what happened is that... Uh, Perhaps you may want to know that sometime in 2006, our church leaders, through the auspices of the Zimbabwe Heads of Christian Denomination, compiled a, 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 a vision document that they called the Zimbabwe that we want. Uh, this process, uh, you know, was a result of a nationwide uh, consultative process where people were consulted regarding the kind of Zimbabwe that they want, right? And uh, if you remember your history well, this... Uh, a vision document was actually launched by the uh, late uh, former President Mugabe. Uh, that's, that was, I think, around May of 2006. Now, since the launch of the vision document, the Zimbabwe we went, you know, that vision has never seen the light of day. There has never been any deliberate effort, as far as I'm concerned, to make sure that uh, there is a strategy to... Uh, uh, have that Zimbabwe that we want. Now, our focus as the church leaders that actually organize this prayer was now to say, what is it that we have to do in order to have this Zimbabwe that we want? So we came up with this program dubbed the Zimbabwe that we want campaign prayer, where we are saying in the Zimbabwe we want. Um, there are issues that have been raised there. One of the issues is that people want a Zimbabwe. Uh, that has, uh, uh, or rather that focuses on an all-inclusive unifying vision. And uh, what we have currently in this country is a sectoral approach, right? Um, people want a Zimbabwe where people can, you know, freely associate, freely assembly and freely worship. And we don't see this happening. And that is the reason why that prayer meeting was blocked. You see, so what we are saying and what we wanted to do was to gather, you know, people from all sectors of the economy, all sectors of the society to say, what is the kind of Zimbabwe that we want? And then we pray around those issues. Right. And so we notified the police, not because uh, we are obliged to do so, because the church does not uh, fall within the um, a regulatory framework of MOPA, you know, because it is church. But you see, we've had to do this because we didn't want to be misconstrued, we didn't want to be misquoted. And then if when we did that, the police agreed with us that we could certainly proceed. But then uh, on the day, they disrupted, you know. One of the reasons that, of course, they raised is that they said that they saw on the program ZCTU being part of the program, ZCTU was going to give a solidarity statement 
and they say that uh, you are now doing politics simply because that city you was uh, was on program and we total we rejected that totally out of hand what we are saying is that that city you is a bona fide labor body which is in zimbabwe they have genuine issues that they have to present to the church so that we facilitate dialogue uh, they have genuine issues that they want to present to the church so that we pray for these issues and that is the reason why ZCTU uh, was supposed to be part and parcel of this process but that was not to suggest that the process was ZCTU driven it was church driven and church led now when we say we i'm referring to the majority of zimbabweans when we say we i'm talking about the church and in particular the bible believing church whose conscience still functions i'm talking about those people that uh, subscribe to the inerrancy of the word of god and subscribe to the infallibility of the word of god i'm talking about the church that is the light of the world that speaks truth to power the church that is salt and light and so this is what i refer to as we and when we're talking about the zimbabwe we want the Zimbabwe we want is one that upholds the constitution. You know, we have a very powerful, richly endowed constitution that was uh, overwhelmingly voted for. The constitution uh, that speaks well about the rights, rights of conscience, freedom of conscience, freedom of association. So I am free to associate with the party that I so desire. Now for a police officer to ask me a question, which political party do I belong to? That is a wrong question. That question is unacceptable in a modern Zimbabwe that is supposed to be a, a democratic Zimbabwe. We want the Zimbabwe where people can speak what they think without having to, you know, turn around to see who is following them. This is the Zimbabwe we want. The Bible says in those days, um, each one of the people will stay under their fig tree and under their vineyard and no man shall threaten them. This is the Zimbabwe that we want. Swords shall be turned into plowshares and spears shall be turned into pruning knives. That is the Zimbabwe that we want. In other words, we are saying that uh, in the Zimbabwe that we want, there is no longer need for us to fight uh, let us translate tools of violence into tools of development. That is the Zimbabwe that we want. John Maxwell says that uh, everything rises and falls around the leader. So what needs to happen in Zimbabwe is for Zimbabweans to understand and to know who it is that can actually deliver the Zimbabwe that they want. Now listen, you cannot combine, you cannot have uh, new wine contained in an old wine skin. The old wine skin will burst. So we need leadership that has got an anointing for development, not a leadership that has got uh, an anointing for violence and fighting. You know, you see, God has assigned to leaderships, different leadership different dispensation for moses he was anointed to get the children of israel out of egypt right so the anointing that moses had was an anointing to fight pharaoh you know anointing to uh, direct those plagues to pharaoh but when he got to canaan when he was about to get to canaan the anointing was now different there was need for a man with a different capacity which is an anointing of development and anointing of land apportioning an anointing of distributing land and that had to be done done by uh, none other than joshua so moses could not uh, cross over to another dispensation because he did not belong there right but also there is a man called david god anointed him to be a fighter he expanded jerusalem but you see, when time for development came, 
David had to give room for Solomon because there was a need for Solomonic anointing which was for development, building the temple of the Lord as opposed to Davidic anointing that was meant for fighting. So Zimbabwe requires right leadership. But also what is, important, what is of importance is that um, as Zimbabweans, we need to sit around the table. We need to talk. We need to have a conversation. The Bible says, come now, let us reason together. Though your sins be red as uh, a crimson, they shall be as white as snow. This is what God's saying. You know, God requires that there be dialogue with him, let alone amongst ourselves. So, so there is need for Zimbabweans uh, to come together and talk. And here I'm not talking about an elitist kind of uh, dialogue where political parties, you know, have a conversation around how they will, um, how they will uh, shape power. We are talking about an all-inclusive uh, conversation. And this is the Zimbabwe that we want. And we no don't negotiate, we demand that kind of Zimbabwe. Is there a particular leader, that one, that one which is endorsed by the church? I will not be drawn into talking about that. What I will talk to you about is a value-based leader. And uh, people are wise enough as of now. Uh, if it becomes necessary at, at some point, that, that might be. But as of now, what we are saying is that, number one, we don't want a murderer. We don't want uh, violence. Anybody that has instigated violence, anybody that has murdered, authorized violence, that leader will not be voted for by the progressive church. Uh, we want a leader that is peaceful, a, a leader that advances peace. But secondly, a leader that is competent as opposed to incompetence. Thirdly, a leader that is adherent to the constitution as opposed to the one that mutilates uh, the constitution. A leader that is God-fearing as a result of one that is into idolatry. A leader who is transparent, not the one who perpetuates uh, uh, corruption. So I have talked about values that the church wants. So people are sharp enough. I don't want to in insult the intelligence of the masses of Zimbabwe. There is the uh, template that we have presented to Zimbabweans and we are saying, come on Zimbabweans, you are sharp enough, you are wise enough, you have this template, vote accordingly. The church has actually been always talking about dialogue, the church has been engaging our politicians uh, regarding the same. The Zimbabwe Heads of Christian Denomination, yes, has been working very hard, engaging uh, politicians. And uh, what we have understood is that uh, politicians have uh, always, uh, you know, so to speak, expressed willingness to dialogue. But the challenge is, is that there's no political will. The challenge at times is that uh, they would want to press conditions uh, for dialogue. This should happen first before, before that happens. But we are saying in the meantime, as, uh, as they place such uh, or advance such uh, conditions, the house is burning. And we are appealing to politicians, uh, the ruling party, the opposition, to consider the plight of the people and have dialogue. But again, I insist, this is not just dialogue among politicians. It's dialogue with the church, with labor, with business, with the vendors, you know, with everybody through their representatives. I'm not talking and I want to underscore, I want to underscore this. I'm not talking about an elitist kind of dialogue. Whoever is going to be taken over from this um, government has a huge task and uh, the only way that that leader is going to manage that is to depart a very deliberate uh, uh, way or decision to depart from the old way of doing things uh, whoever is taking over should understand that uh, they are you know taking over a, a country which is not a nation <coughs> excuse me it is uh, professor gachen who actually said that the problem with zimbabwe is not necessarily corruption or looting 
corruption and looting are a byproduct of a fractured um, state, a fractured country. In other words, Gatsheni poses that there is no nation to talk about.